good evening. Uh, welcome to uh, Ngigo Virtual Lecture Series. Uh, today's lecture is a continuation of what we had the last time. Uh, we are talking about developing a questionnaire or otherwise an instrument. Um, to recap the last lecture, we said that it's good to have an idea, it's good to have a project topic, it's good to have objectives. But when it comes to developing an instrument to collect data, uh, what you need to do is that you should not just sit behind your desk and then write out things and call them questionnaires and then go and ask. Because in 99% of the case, if you do that, you miss out on what really you are supposed to do. Because in most of the things, there are standardized way of capturing them. So we said there are two methods, at least, that you could use. One of them is to go in there and search for standardized questionnaires for the particular project right that you are doing. In most cases, you will get a standardized questionnaire for it or a questionnaire that is related, that have been validated for use. The other way around is to go reading people's work. Now, so you go reading people's work. In this time round, you focus on their methodology and then their results. So if you focus on the methodology, they are likely to tell you how they captured the data. A few things will come up there. Um, you are also going to see a few of the things that they took and how they even use it by way of what analysis in their results. So if you look at a few published articles in your area of interest, and then you find out how those people did it, the results they got, and how they've used those results, then it will inform you as you go to form your questionnaires. It will inform you on the things that you are supposed to want to take, because most of the things might not have come into your mind. As an individual who is sitting down and planning to put up questions or instruments to go out there and take up data, a lot of things might not come into your mind. But if you look through the literature and look at people's results, you will find out that there are a lot of things that they might have done that you can also what do. Again, if you pick up some of those things, you also are sure of the kind of data that you may get and then also how to treat those data after you have finished collecting the, the data. The other thing is that when you finish collecting the data, because you are taking things in a standardized way or similar to published article, it is very easy for you to compare your results with what other people have done. Because you are doing something in line with what has already been published. So when you get your result, your discussion becomes what? Easier. Other than doing something very different, where the topics may be the same, but at the end of the day, when you finish, you realize that there's a lot of things that you should have taken, but you didn't take. In most cases, as a helper, if people come to you with their data and they say this was the objectives that you were looking for, you realize that the questions that they went out there to ask really does not give them what they want. Hello? Yeah, but because they've not gone through that process of looking, taking their time to look at what actually exists and what they can get and what they can add up to the edge, in most cases, they miss the target. So the process we went through the last time 
finding questionnaires on the net, finding standardized way on the net, uh, questionnaires on the net. Like we use the adherence, uh, what do you call it? Uh, example, adherence to anti-malaria example, and then we downloaded standardized questionnaires on the net. Now, when you download a standardized questionnaire, you are not obliged to use it entirety. It's always about relevance and the thing that you are what doing. So you could modify a standardized questionnaire. The fact that it has been made as a standard way of doing something, if there are things that are not applicable to what you are doing, or if there are things that by virtue of your resource, you cannot actually do that, you have every right to modify it. Like I give an example. Uh, if there is a questionnaire that is saying that, let's say we are looking out for uh, use of anti-malaria and then you are looking for some of the factors and it says that uh, what do you call it I'm not able to take my uh, medication when it is what snowing in Ghana there is no snow so you cannot say that because that is how the standardized questionnaire is you will continue to go and ask those questions it is not applicable again if you have a questionnaire most often than not when questionnaires are uh, develop. They have what they call the long versions and then the short versions. Now, the long versions may contain a lot of questions, sometimes 100 questions. Now, the 100 questions that you may find will be too much for you to use to take uh, what you call the data. But in most cases, they will do what we call psychometry analysis on those questionnaires and reduce them to short versions. Hello. Um, yeah, and the psychometry analysis comes with, for example, you do factor analysis and realize that some of the questions are what are redundant by virtue of the loadings that they give you. So they are redundant, but you can use one question to get you the same answer that five questions will what will be used. So then you use the one question instead. So you can choose also. You have uh, what do you call it? The liberty to choose whether to use the short form. Or pick some of the what the questions from the from the long form and then what use them. So it is actually you are doing more or less an exploration to look out for what is there, so that at the end of the day you can get an instrument that can get you what you want in a standardized what manner. Now after you have gotten those instruments together, now there is a way to put those instruments together so that they become attractive. And then also easy for the respondent to what? answer those questions. That is why normally we talk about questionnaires and we add the word design. Now, I'm going to present you two questionnaires, the same words, the same text. And then you tell me which of them, if you are a respondent, that will appeal to you to what? To answer. And as most of the researchers, they will tell you, that they have tried some things before. I have a colleague that said he had a questionnaire, he sent it out there. None of the questionnaire, uh, what we call respondents, was ready to answer them. He came back, repackaged the questionnaire, and then put it even in a booklet form. Now, when they were distributing the questionnaires, some of the patients were now asking, As for me, you didn't give me some of the question. Uh, I didn't know a book could be with a book your mommy. Yeah, because the questionnaire has been what? Has been packaged well. Now, most often than not, it doesn't take too much to even package the questions well and make them simple and make them attractive. So, because it is more of a doing class, let's see some of the examples of the questionnaires that we are talking about. All right. Um, so, I'm going to show you two questionnaires or more. The unstructured forms and then the structured form. Then I'll show you how I structured those questionnaires and you realize that they are very easy to put them into those structures. Using not any extraordinary, uh, what do you call it, software, but there are softwares that you can use to structure questionnaires. Later on, we'll have other colleagues to come in and do those. Some have agreed already, so come in and show us how to do those things. For example, you can use EpiInfo to design questionnaire is a software that is built for that. You can use it to design a questionnaire. Um, but when you are capturing the data, you can use EpiData 
to capture that. But IP data, I don't show you can print it out as questionnaire, but you can design your questionnaire interface to take the data. But with IP info, you can use it to develop your own questionnaire. And thankfully, IP info is also what free. So it is non proprietary. You can easily get your hands around it and then use it. So let's let's go to uh, the questionnaires that I'm talking about. For example, this questionnaire, I have a story behind it. I normally tell it, but today we are recording. I don't know if it is prudent to tell the story. So maybe I'll tell you off camera. <laughs> I'll tell you off camera. So this is a questionnaire that somebody developed. And uh, it was brought to me actually to just look at it. And I saw I could do better. And I there was a resistance as to how I could do it, but I did it. And later, uh, a lot of things went went on. So this is somebody's questionnaire. Don't mind the text. It was a questionnaire that somebody developed, and they were going to use it for uh, what do you call a survey. So this is what the person developed. Okay, the, the same questionnaire. You see how um, that same questionnaire, uh, what do you call it, has been changed into a different form here. Why did I click on that? Okay, so this is the same questionnaire that you saw. I will show you it's the same. The bottom, word to word. Hello. Hi. So the same questionnaire. Okay. This is it. This is the questionnaire. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the words, you realize they are the same questionnaires. Okay. Right. That is the same questionnaire you see here. And this is it. So if you are a respondent and we give you these two questionnaires, um, I, should go back to the I should go back to the earlier one. Yeah, this is the earlier one. Did you do any because I don't see the, the like a skin? Yeah, it is at the top here. See, here it's telling you write the number there. That is why there is the do 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 do. And then what I did was to put the numbers there for you to take. <laughs> Okay, so you can you can change the face of questionnaires and put them into structures and make them very attractive. Somebody is here, he's looking at my face. He knows his questionnaire can be changed and then make the face look like. He has written a lot, a lot of very long sentences as questionnaires and that is why he's here. So it's a good class for him. Uh, though he didn't expect this was what was going to happen. Yeah, so this was just uh, an example of some of those things that I tried. So the question is that, how did I get this thing done? How did I get this thing done? The answer is this. The answer is this. When I say the answer is this, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, that is the development of the questionnaire. It's the questionnaire that you see here. This is no software. This is Microsoft Excel. The lie, you're shaking your head. You don't believe it's Microsoft Excel. You don't believe it's Microsoft Excel. It's Microsoft Excel. Now, all that is happening is that there's an Excel sheet that I pull this one down and then copy the topic and put it inside. I leave a space. I just do merge. I merge these two, this thing. I put it here. I put this one in one, just thing like that. Then what you are seeing around it is just border and shading. All the other things you are seeing is border. So here 
it is border you just put the border around it this one you just use this to put the border the borders around it and then when it comes to the shading this is it fill you just fill it in so you see this one was what was used to do the shading hello yeah so you can see the color that is there that is it nothing more now you will now ask where are these round things coming from these ones are coming from shapes so you just go to insects and if you are not using the type of uh, this thing that I'm using it will come different but if you are using the same uh, Microsoft Word I'm using this here you just go to this side and then you pick any of the shapes that you want so with this one you pick the oval shape just copy that you put it in anywhere you want like this okay so if I put it here like this mm -hmm. I can make it smaller as I want or bigger as I want now the next thing is that I want it to be transparent okay so I go and edit the properties mm -hmm. yeah so I can right click to edit the properties or use the one at the top there to edit the properties so you see the fill inside I don't want the fill to be uh, what do you call it I can just take it out then the fill is out at the top here you can see that the outline I want the outline to be black I just come here and say the outline to be black and that is it now the only thing is that after I've done the first one I will not continue going to insects because I want all of them to look what they say so what I'll do is that I will just copy it and then be putting them there yeah so I'll just you say Control D. Yeah. What will that give me? Yeah, it duplicates that. Okay, I've not seen that shortcut before. So even Control D will just be duplicating it for you. I was copying and pasting. Good. So you can just use Control D as you are having here. So once you take it, then now you can place them there. You can place them there. In fact, even the fact that they are the same, what happens is that. The next time round, when I want to build it, I'll just copy the same cells and paste them down. They'll change the words, they'll change the number. So that they look like the same things coming from, uh, what do you call it, the this thing. So we are going to take some questionnaire and then try to develop it like this and let you see that it is nothing like anything. It's not magic. It's not magic. So like you said, now we know if you do control D, it will develop it. It will duplicate those things for you. Hello. Yeah. yeah. So there are various forms of this thing that I've done with design with uh, what do you call it SL that I can show them to you. There are various various questionnaires that we've designed with SL. Uh, we can show you a lot of them so that you appreciate that. Uh, basically, that is what I use in doing most of my my my, my questionnaires. Basically, that is what I use in designing most of my questionnaires. Just SL. I use SL to do that. Though I can use uh, Epi Info, but it's it, 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 it's not necessary for most of the things that I do. But it's a very fine software, and I want somebody to come and do that for you. Again, with Epi Info, you can do it soft. So after you've done your design, you keep the design there. When you get your results, you can use it to do the inputs also. You can use it to do the input and capture it electronically. Just like we use the EP data in doing those things. So let's look at a few of those questionnaires that uh, I've designed before with this, some of these things. Let's see a few of them. Um, okay, here do we go? All right, so um, let's hope we get them. Questionnaire, 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 questionnaire. Okay, questionnaire. So I'm going to show you the building of the questionnaire. Yeah, so you see this one is one of those questionnaires. Okay, so the questionnaire that is how it was built. Okay help people to do their work most often so you see this one instead of the round round you are seeing the square being there as for the shape you can put the shape anywhere you want i just happened to have found a colleague that have done this and i just said wow that's nice i could use it to do my thing and i just use it 
Yes. No, I should go up rather. Okay. So this is it. Now you can go and look at the final final questionnaire itself as it comes out as uh, what do you call it. So this is the final one. So what happens is that I do that you do that with the um SL and then you you you, you save it as PDF. Okay, but I have some small small softwares that can make you print. Right now, you can use Phantom to do that printing also. You can print on Phantom. So that thing you are seeing there, this is the products. Okay, this is the products. So it makes it look very easy, and you can use it to design your questionnaire. So questionnaire design, I do parts. It is how the questionnaire itself, the the con questioning system, the content itself. And then again, how you what you present it. Hello. Hi. Yeah. So it involves the content itself, one, and then how it is what presented. So this is simple SL. You use SL in doing that. All that you have seen here is border shading. Yeah, you merge, you center some, you merge some, you use some, and like that. And it's always advisable that you number your questionnaires. Uh, when we were doing the like it skill, you realize that it's easier to number them because when you are doing the entry, you can easily use that as what as the codes for the entry. Very easy. Now, other people will say that as you put the questions here, I don't find them so necessary. I don't know why it has gained so much ground. I think it makes, to me, it makes the questions laborious. But other people in other fraternity insist on that. But I don't, I don't see it to be so necessary. What I will tell you is that the question answers should be coded. So what happens is that for this one, as the answers are here, you have to put numbers against them. Letters. Letters or numbers against them as one. Two, three, okay. One, two, three, and the rest. Yeah, like we have a copy here. I don't know what how we can show it to you in a, <laughs> in a camera. I'll put it on my face so that you can see them right. But seriously, if you ask my personal opinion, it's unnecessary. It's unnecessary because after I finish, uh, what do you call it, the answers, if I want to code them, supposedly code them, the coding is supposed to make the entry what easy. Like we did the last time and we'll be doing, even in this class, how to capture data. You realize that it is a very simple thing. You just decide on how you use the code. You can even just write one, two, three on them if you want to. They don't necessarily have to appear on this thing. Sometimes they make it look so complicated and they say if no answer go and choose 99 and don't forget the audience you are presenting the things words such things can easily complicate uh, what you call it confuse them with the numbers and stuff and things like that so something that can easily be done after the what do you call it if you do you even need to code it that is a decision you need to make after entering yeah capturing the data you have to decide whether you even code and if you want to code transferring them from one place to the other like we'll be doing is very easy just find and replace and that is it it's just changing to which code you want to work so i don't see them so necessary to put the codes no, no what yeah it depends on you but I have seen people insisting that it should be coded. It should be coded. I don't see it necessary. That's my candid opinion. Seriously, I don't see it necessary. In most cases, they do that and make the thing look cumbersome. The whole, uh, what do you call it, questionnaire look cumbersome. For example, with this one that I have done, if I want to put codes on this one, it means that I will have to be putting some things beside this things here. And I think it's going to be complicated. Are you getting it? It's clever the way it is now. The person just tick it. So if after entry, I want to do the entry, and I say none is one, uh, what do you call former is what do you call two, and then informer is three. It is very simple for me to just write that on one of the sheets and say this is my code and just be entering it. 
Supposedly, the code are supposed to make facilitate entry. Yeah, are you getting it? Yeah. So the coding thing, my candid opinion is that it's completely unnecessary. Seriously, that is my candid opinion. Yes. You, know, you see some people, they will create another, uh, what do you call a line at the side like this, and then the codes are there. If they skip to that, if that skip this, if this, and, and, and the whole questionnaire becomes very laborious. So if you can use codes and still make the questionnaire look clear, clean, simple, to do without any confusion, fine. Because the questionnaire, you should always know the audience. And in most cases, for those of us at health areas and things, you even not health. I've seen people that distributed questionnaires to supposedly learned people, teachers at secondary school. But if you see the response, you realize that in most cases they didn't understand the questions that was being asked. So you should be able to understand your audience very well and don't complicate the the what do you call it, the instruments, especially if it is self administered hello yeah so this is one of such uh, what do you call it questionnaires that you can easily you can easily do um, there are so many ways as for how you want to present the thing and make them look uh, that is what the only caution is that you are designing and if you are designing thing and there is here too there is some alignment within the response it's cool for example, if you look at this one, you can see that they are, have tried to make them follow. Are you getting it? I've tried to make the questionnaires, the, the answers follow. So where it's possible, you make the answers follow. Not that one is here, one is there, one is here, one is here, one is here. That is the sense of using the Excel. Yeah. You can apportion, you can apportion the cells to, to that. So the tick boxes sometimes, you realize one is here, one is here. So if you are not careful, while the person is ticking this, you end up ticking the other one. Okay. So if you are, can align them, and make them look nice it's okay like this one you realize i even tried to make this one align with what were this because the response looks what almost the same so they are aligned so try and do some alignment in places where you cannot do it fine but even with this one you realize there's one here there's one here there's one here there's one here and these ones are falling within what in the middle are you getting it? Yeah. yeah. So try as much as possible to align it and let it look neat. Let it look clean. Okay. Why are you looking at my face and you're laughing? <laughs> you know yours doesn't yes. look. You know yours doesn't look clean. Doesn't look neat. <laughs> so so look at it. Let the questions stand on their own. Very clear. Okay. The questions should be standing on their own. Very clear. And then make sure that the response can also be traced easily. So if you see these lines like this, you realize that it's easy for the person to follow the line and then go into the what? The response. Okay? It's very easy for the person to follow the line and go into the response. Other than if it was done raw, just written raw and for the person to read. So you can easily do this. And we are all going to try. We are all going to try to do this one before we leave. At least produce part of this thing before we leave because talking is cheap and doing is what is different hello Hi. yeah so we will try try and at least do something i have some questionnaires here whether i should bring it out for us to do it but that may be a little bit because of time we may, we may try to see this thing so yeah as i meant to go and develop questionnaires and bring them that would be cool as I meant to go and question and say, bring them. Yeah. But the, the, the works you are doing, you have not designed the questionnaires yet, have you? No. No. So, okay. Now you know how to design the questionnaires. You know how to find them. So, you should be able to design them then. Okay. So, let's look at this one also. You should find another similar questionnaire, similar design. Um, so, I'm showing you things that I've done with SL before. Uh, and they have come out, they have come out nicely. You see, they have come out nicely. Yeah, you have been seeing questionnaire final, questionnaire final, final, because you would draft, you go review it, bring back and do that. Yeah, yeah. So you see for this one like this also, 
you can see it is SL that was used in doing these things. Okay, the same SL that was used. Um, so we're going back, going back to find the questionnaire itself, and then see. Yeah. So this is how it turns out at the end of the day. Uh, that thing you see out there is the same questionnaire that is here. So you can see uh, the things that have been done on that questionnaire. Yeah. So this one's when you print and it comes like this, you may have to change it. That's why you have final, final, final answer. So you have to go and push it down a bit so that you can get it down on the bridge. So this is the questionnaire that you are seeing at that place. Okay. Yeah, this cannot be the final because they are cutting. So when it cuts like this, you go and then insert more cells in there and then you bring it down. So we'll be working with some of these things. Any question up to this stage? Contributions? Yeah. Project, yeah. Uh, the SD and the DIS, they look like traps. Is it possible to use something with that? It's not going to be at the bottom. Yeah. Is it possible to use something with that? No, no, I don't think it will help. What I do is that I'll just copy this side here in the SL sheet and then just come and paste it here. Now I'll just change the words here. Yeah. Just paste the next one here. Then I'll just change the words. Oh. What she's asking is the options. Um, yeah. That is this. The essay is what? From the strong strong that is this here. That row, mm -hmm. is it possible to um, click on it and then drag to the field? And yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure. It's not possible. Is it? Sure. Try it and let's see. The circle is they say a text. Yeah, the circle is not a text. Whatever. Let's 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 let Dominic try it and let's see if it will work. Okay. The circle will not come. Yeah. Yeah, the law wanted to use some of these skills. The second will come. Yes. Oh, the devil is coming. It's game. It's coming. Okay. Okay. Then you can auto fill. But if you have, you have, you have. Okay. Let's try that one. That's when everything is going to be like that. Okay. Let's let's try something. Let's try something. This is what the law is. The law is talking about. Yeah. Let's try the different forms and what will work. Yeah, I'm going to open a new sheet. So I'm just copying this side like this and then I'm sending it onto a new sheet. Okay, so, so we put it on a new sheet. Uh, I didn't paste it with a format, so that's what it's like. Okay, so I have to pay it with a source format. This special. Yeah, that's this special, but I'm pasting with a source format. I think it's the first one. I think it's the first one. The first one, it will still shrink. It doesn't. It doesn't have to shrink. That's why I'm pa not pasting well. Oh, I didn't copy well. I'm coming. No. It cannot say it will shrink. I won't allow it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Now I'm copying it from here, so I'll paste it from the from the cell side and see. Okay. You still want to shrink? I don't know how. The page number is the the second to last. No, if you want to complete the range on the new page. Now uh, you should have been able to give me. Uh, yeah, this is source formatting. Yeah, this is it. There. Uh -huh. Yeah, so. And you call range? The range is perfect. Yes, come on. Okay. Okay, so you can paste with source formatting and it should be. Right. So, so we are getting ourselves round SL. So, what is what I was doing? So, let's say I'm putting the next question. I'll rather click on the eight. I'll click on this one, not here. I will not come and select this one in here. We are not seeing the cell. Um, yeah. Click it well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clicking on the eight. That is the rule. 
I'm clicking on the row, not the cell. I'm clicking on the row name. So I'm just going to do. Dominic, I don't see your problem. My problem is we can't see your eight on the screen. You can't see my eight on the screen. Yes. Oh, that is a a a vivid tech problem. Not. <laughs> All right. So okay, let me reduce the size a little here and see if you can see. It's even worse. Okay. Let me just go on with my hundred. So I will just paste it on the ten. Okay. Oh no, let me come down on the twelve like this, and I'll just paste it. Control V. Oh, fine. Are you getting it? So now, whichever question that is here, so now this one becomes eight. Then whichever question that I want to ask, whether the lie is in code today, yes or no. <laughs> uh, then I'll just type whatever I want to do. So I don't redo this words. Uh, are you getting it? Uh -huh. If it will flow like that, I don't redo it. Now let's try the fill. Okay, so now the autofill will be SC and then the second. Like this. Yes. And then now you fill it. Yes. Like that. Oh, okay. What happened? Well, I mean, it's a... The devil is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Okay, this is what we wanted to do. Yeah, it comes. Yeah, so you can auto fill it. <laughs> you can auto fill. Thanks to the light, you can auto fill. <laughs> you can auto fill. Yeah, I've never done that before, so I'm learning. There is always room for learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I could now select both this and this like this. You know what I mean? I like easy things, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and every day you say that. <laughs> All right. So, uh, <laughs> so this is this is this is it. Um, you can auto fill. I should highlight forty eight and then. Okay. Yeah, you can also do that. Since this one is filling, I don't see any any problem why I want to shoot also fill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it always it also no, it's not being lazy, but it's getting it standardized. Yeah. Also you save a lot of time. But they all look the same because so you take your time and do the first one. And then you drag for the others too. When we start doing analysis and doing graphing, you realize that it's very important. So we are using something like graph pad prism. You can even clone the graph. So you do one graph and you can clone it to see to the others. Okay. Yeah. 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 Clone it. It's it's more like <laughs> genetic by five. <laughs> All right, it's like the next graphs you are actually developing it from the other one. Just make the other one look like that. They have some magic wine. You just click on that magic wine, and all the other graphs will look like the one you have chosen. Okay, or you can duplicate the family, and then all the other I need to do is just change the figures, and they look like the same. So, all the editing you have done is saved. So, when you are using graph pad, those things are. Easy. That yeah, yeah, whatever name you want to call it. <laughs> okay, let's 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 continue. So you can do you can do you can do these things. Okay, so let's take a raw rough sheet, okay, of SL, and then let's see how we can develop something on our own, and then print it out for you to see that you can demystify this particular thing that we are talking about. You don't need to be an expert in computer in order to use. Uh, some of these things. They are basic. Yeah, I don't need to become a graphic designer before you design a, a very nice question. Okay. Yeah. You can you can do it. You can do it. It's very easy. It's just a it's just a click. Uh -huh. It's just a click. click. All right. Uh, uh, let's 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 just try something like that. So I'm going to pull out some question and then we'll try and develop it ourselves and see. Hello? You want to copy templates? No, we are starting from a rough sheet. We are starting from a rough sheet. 
Okay, so let's say that we have this blank sheet as our Excel sheet. Hello. Hi. So we have this blank sheet as our Excel sheet. Okay. And then we want to develop a questionnaire on it. Okay. Now the first thing you want to do is that you have to know the margins. You have to leave the margins. So you click on this one. Okay, the layout. So that you know the margins. As in printable margin. Yeah, printable margin. So that you don't go beyond it. Hello. Hi. Yeah. So that is the first thing you need to do. So you click on the layouts down here and then you get the margins. You know SL the actual thing is together all the way long down there. But that is not what if you are not careful you transverse one sheet. So once you do this like this, you now have the sheet in front of you. So now you know that if you move this sheet all the way down, you know when you get to the next sheet, you know you are going beyond it. Yeah. So you know so now it comes as one page, one page for you. Hello. Are you there? Good. All right. So once you do that, you first do click on the layout and now you know your sheet. Now you can decide on what you want to do. So if let's say the open statement like we had in this questionnaire, let's say that let's say one of these questionnaires, the open statement that we have. Okay. Uh, I am this, blah, blah, blah. I am that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, school, blah, 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 and all that. So let's say that you want to put something like that down. You see those ones, for this one, there are no borders around them. Okay, the person decided not to put border around them. But I realized on the other one, the borders that coming in here became a little bit like a design. So these ones, there are no border behind them. So let's use this, this ones like that. So for example, you want to start something. Okay, so what you do is that you could merge this ones. So you click on that, you select the sheet, you could merge this sheet. So when you select it like this, merge, this is it. You just click on this and image the sheet for you. Hello. Hi. Yeah, so once the sheet is merged, you can type anything in there. So if you want to type University of you can use cap case, whatever case you want to do, whatever you want to do, you can do that. So if you want to type University of <laughs> Health and Allied Sciences. Okay, so you could put it this way. Now, if you want to increase the sizes, the fonts and everything is here. You can change it just like we have been doing for all the other things. So you can put any font type that you want. Okay. Maybe you are interested in something like this. And then the size, because it's a header, maybe you want to increase the size like that. Everything you want to do works. Now, don't be bothered about this border that you see here. The border that you see here is not a printable border. When you print it, it won't come. All the borders you are seeing here. When you print them, they won't come. So can you show us the print preview? Yeah. So let's go to print preview. That will be fine. So if you go to print preview, that is um, this one, like this. Yeah. So this is how it will look like. So realize there's no border there. Are you getting it? Oh, yeah. yeah. There's no border there. So those are not printable borders. Okay. Good. So the next thing where you want to put it, how you want to put it. So maybe the next thing is the words. You may want to join or merge like two or three, depending on where, what you call it, the write-up that you are doing, the, this thing. So you may want to merge this one. Okay, so let me just go and copy for the sake of time. Let me just go and copy what is there and then come and put it in there. Something like this. Okay, and then come and put it in there. It's more like, uh, what do you call it? Um, an introduction of the so you just put it in here like this okay so when you put it in here that is it okay as for how it will appear whether you want to center it whether you want to put it here so this ones that you see here will show you how it will align 
If I click on it like this, realize it will align the things, the text to this side. Okay, if I click on it this way, it will align the text to this side. So these things can be used. All of this can be used. So you put it as the best way possible. As for the or font, uh, what do you call it, font size also, you push, you push it as the best as you want. Okay, uh, the text, this thing, people say they want what? Palatino. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I put Palatino and you are in trouble. Okay, so sometimes you realize that some part is hiding. You can just come and hold this side and then just pull it down. Hmm? Okay, so Palatino is giving you problems now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can wrap the test. Let's see. Maybe we wrap it again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think you can just come and knock this one down. And then let's see. The better. The better. The space between the better. Yeah. Yeah, the justification is what is causing the problem. I know, but you need to sort it out. Let's go. Now it's sorted. Hello. Hi. Yeah, so if you think this is okay for you, if you want to bold it or you want to do it, whatever it is, it is your own tastes. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Like the woman that does the, what you call the drink, when it gets to where you have to ask, put the sugar, you say, ask for that one, while I'll taste that. Yeah. That so, one will kill Rex. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's try the, let's try the cold parts. Let's try the cold parts. So the cold parts, you may want to use these things and use them nicely. So you may want to type here code. Okay. Then this side, you want to put an underline or something that. So you come here. Okay. You can use this ones. Okay. So as soon as you use that, I mean you put a line there. Are you getting it? Right. Then the next thing you want to do, you push that into what you call it. If we want a next test, can follow like this. Let's say pregnant. Okay. Then a pregnant, you want a checkbox. So that is where you go to what? Insects. Okay. You go to your shapes. And then whichever checkbox you think fit, you could put it. I saw Adam using this one. There are other checkboxes here. You can use any of them that you think. That now nah, there are all sorts of things here. You can use any of them, but don't use something so come by some that will make the whole thing. Uh, example: If you go and push this one there like this, it will make it look a little bit funny. Yeah. So if you want this one, maybe you can go and take it and then put it there. Okay. Yeah. This is what uh, hexagon. Yeah. Exactly. Then you come and edit the the the, the inside. Yeah, the fill. You want the fill to always to be what to be transparent. And depending this one, it is your own taste. Uh -huh. wow. But most of them, because the text is going to be printed in black and white, you may want to push it as black. So you now choose to put it here, depending on what you want. You make it size. You take your time for the first one. You make sure it is what it is right the size you want then the next thing is what control what D then you duplicate it hello yeah yeah control G so control D will just duplicate it I also do is when I'm moving to this place I can put it on this one and then use the arrow key. arrow key so that it will be in line yeah so what it means is that you can align this one with this so that you make sure that they are all in the same line. And then I use your arrow keys to shift it so that you are sure that they will all be in what? In line. Hello? Yeah. So that at the end of the day, you know that they will all be in what? Be in line. Are you okay? Yes. Good. So designing questionnaires becomes easy. Abby? Yeah, so let's go to the next one. Perforal. Yeah, let's go to the next one and then do the perforal. Yeah.
So this is the peporal. We have it, uh, this thing here. So we put it in. Make sure that you are putting it exactly in the middle so that everybody can see that you've done it well. You can change the font size and all. You could do all those things. Now the next thing is what? We have a date. So we can put a date. I know Valentine people had dates. Yeah. So those of us who didn't have dates, we slept in us. Uh, yeah, slept in the Yeah, slept in Now <laughs> All right. So um, the next one is the date. So we just type in here date. Hello. Are you trying your hands on it? Good. So the date, normally you can put the year there. But as for the day and the other one, you may just have to let it go. Okay. So you can put the date there. Uh, you can use an underscore if you want. Okay, you can use an underscore as many times as you want. It can it give you the lines? So if it is three, then you can use a backslash. Okay, you can use a backslash for it. Then you put on another underscore. One, two, three. Then a, what? A backslash for it. Um, and then the next one, I'm going to put what? 2016. Hello. Anticipate you are going to collect your data. Your data in January stand. Yeah. If you are not going to do that, you don't do it. Now, because these are the last part of the destiny, I want to merge these two. Okay. I just want to merge these two so that yeah, they feel at the back like this for me. Again, because I want this one to be close to them, I'll push this one to the edge like this so that they become close. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Uh, I don't like the font sizes. I want the font sizes to increase. So I'm going to increase the font sizes by clicking on this one. So you see, as I increase the font sizes, uh, the, the, this thing becomes bigger. Hello. Hi. Are you there? Yes. Yeah, and I don't even like the text. I like it the way the boys are talking. So I'm going to use it for them. I'll put it at this way. Okay, so now I have the text becoming big. And then I'm coming. I'm encountering a problem with the uh, uh, what do you call the shapes. yeah the shapes yeah. So what happens is that I'll push the shapes a little bit. I'll push them. So I'll put the shapes a little. Rearrangement is needed here. Now, when it comes to the alignment of the shapes, since I want them to be at the same, I'll click on this one, hold control, and click on this one. So when I move, all of them will move at the same time. Are you there? Yeah. yeah. So some of the maneuverings you can easily do. Um, a few of them you can do that. So for example, I can choose to just link this one with this. Okay. Just put these two together, merge it. Okay. So that I push it itself away from that one, so that I can have enough space there and put this one in here. So, if I go for a print preview now, you realize that my arrangements are cool. Hello? Hi. Yeah. If you want to bold things, you can bold them. Sometimes you try it. You bold it and look at it and see if it is nice. If it is not nice, you take it out. So, for this one like this, you can choose to bold them. Okay? Let's bold them and see. If it is better for the bold, we left them like that. If it is not, you come and remove it. So, you are designing something. You have to try things and see. Hello. Uh -huh. Yeah, you have to try things and see. So the print preview is this how it's going to look like. So we realize that our text, some part is going to get what get lost. So we need to go and give that space to the text. So we go back. Okay. And all that we need to do is just come and hold this side. Uh, the last part of that, uh, this thing is this, right? So we can just click inside this one like this. We know where the last part is. We can pull it down, down, down. PhD. Yeah. Pull me down. <laughs> PhD. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. I could even increase the size here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we can pull it. We go back and check it every time you do something. You check on a print preview and see whether you get it the way you want it. So I think this one, it's okay, the way you want it. Yeah. Hello. 
Yeah. The arrow over there. The arrow uh, Ah, okay, okay. I can bring the print preview as part of my. Since we are using this option. Yeah. Yeah, print preview. Yeah, I can add it to my, my, my quick, quick buttons, quick ribbons. So anytime I click on it, it just, it just send me there easily, and then I come back. So it save a lot of what, a lot of time. Hello. Hi. Good. Let's continue. Let's do some few things because of time, and then we'll come back. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. The gurus are talking. They say that the print preview, you just do Control P, and it take you there. Yeah. Control P is print, so print. That is definitely bring you to print preview. Okay. All right. <laughs> And the back two will be what? Control B. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> that is that is for it. So you see you can develop these things as you go along. So it 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 is it you have a little bit of imagination and then just use it. So now the next one it's it's in a box. So we want to copy it and see. So uh, this one is more like a consent, a little consent form. Uh, okay, so you can put a little consent form on there. Consent form. <laughs> consent. consent. <laughs> I'm laughing because I know why I'm laughing. Consent form. Adam, <laughs> Adam, why are you laughing? A little consent form. I left the eye, but don't worry, it's a little consent form. So, um. And then be careful, though. Don't put us into trouble. All right. So I'm going to join the two like this. When I join, it becomes centered. That's the default. But I don't want it centered. I'll bring it back. Okay. Then I'll increase the size. Okay. I'll increase the size a little. So now I have a, a place to put my yes. That is, if you agree, click yes. If you do not agree, tick no. <laughs> did I say that? No. He wants me to say that. Okay. Fine. So I'll make this one also the same 14. So I'll make this one and this 14, right? I can just go here and then keep pick on my 14. And then I go to the side and pick on my Palatino. I always just click on P and I get my Palatino. Um, you don't need to use Palatino anyway. You are not under any compulsion to use Palatino. You can use anything you want. You should use what? Perpetual time. Perpetual time. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so you see this one like this. When I put it at back, it's getting close to the text. So I can just move it forward like this. Are, are you getting it? Uh -huh. So sometimes you play around some of those things. Centering it, moving it forward, and stuff and things like that. So that you can get a space that you want. So what I do now is I go forward to my control what D. And then I duplicate. Okay, then I'll lift it, people, people, then I'll bring right. it away. Yeah. So since we need to, can we select the two and then do the control D and try? Okay, all right. Yeah, we are always discovering new things here. So this control, select, then I do D. Wow, then I get it too. So I just use the arrow key to just shift them. Okay, I move them like that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I can move them by still holding. Yeah. Okay. So this is it. They are there. Yeah. Yeah, even giving me more because I think I over I overdid. <laughs> I overdid. So I can just push this one like this. And I know they are all what a lie. Okay. Uh -huh. They are all aligned. As for the side in shifting, I can shift them. But when they come to the other distance, I know they are all aligned. Yeah. So now, now let's go for the border and shading, uh, the borders and shading parts. So you realize that for this one like this, what I did is I can just select this ones 
here then I go to the border okay I want the one that goes all around yeah outside the box so once I do that the box have become like that hello yeah sometimes if you think sometimes the the default size is not so visible uh, you may want to change it you can go down here go to more borders and shading and then change the font size the size okay why aren't you coming now uh, I thought that argument had been settled by now uh, I thought the argument had been settled okay so so when you come to this side <laughs> when you come to this side you can change a few things um, no I'm not getting what I want yeah the lines are here you can choose to choose this one if you want the border is shading there is another one to take yeah that, that happens in there but yeah if you do this okay you have to come and apply it to both here down the and then this side okay that is the SL way of doing it yeah so that makes it a little thicker okay yeah I think that's better than the the, 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 the the slim one the slim one looks like yeah you see it's thicker so the slim one looks like it it was hungry or something okay all right so you can choose to do whatever you want to do okay so let's go for let's say the headings maybe you want the heading like this okay let's go for the headings um, you choose to make uh, the instructions you choose to make them so you just come to this side and then just what merge and then what they I just click inside and then I paste okay then the next thing is what doing the fonts I can click outside and then do the font thing okay you can do the font thing hello Hi. are you there with me oh I'm becoming boring now okay Hi. all right so I can just push this one here so now I want this one to be a heading so I want this one to show okay I want to make this visible so it's a heading to one thing that I'm doing that is demography so I want to show so I can go to this side and choose any color that appeals to me red okay <laughs> let's try red this is how it's going to look like <laughs> yeah but red 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 and then you can change the text also if you put red, red and red. white no, want red. if you put red and white background it looks nice red valentine. yeah <laughs> it looks valentine uh, but you should also think of your your, your printer. <laughs> yeah. So normally you don't you put some things that you know you can you can get it then. So let's change the red maybe and go for some of the colors that looks yeah. You can choose very clean colors like this one. Even this one with the white uh, this thing is nice. shades of black yeah so what you do is that you can reduce even part of the text if not all the text so if you think some parts are not so appropriate you can reduce the part and make the other part stand so this side I've reduced the other part because it was spilling over yeah because it was spilling over I've reduced one part of the text and then make this part stand hello yeah are you with me still good so you can change the the the, the, the text color and then the fill color to so anything that you want anything that you think it's cool you can change it and make it look like that mm. hello what, what you are seeing you don't like it right <laughs> <laughs> so I can choose to join this one the whole of this and this like that I can just go here and then choose this brother and I've joined this one and this together how they appear it's my taste hello Hi. yeah so if you want to preview this one like we said 
this is how it's going to look. If you think the fonts are too small, you can go and increase them. If you think they are too big, you can go and do that. Right. So because of time, we won't spend too much time on this one. We're just going to print what we've done. And then, or let's add something small to it. And then we'll just print because it's almost time. And I don't want the lot to wait too much here. The lot. All right, so let's do the first thing, the location and then the distance. So you see, for this one now, I'm going to do a panel. I'm going to do some paneling, okay? So I'm going to make sure that this one becomes what? My numbering panel, okay? Then I choose. How many of these do I want to use for the question? Maybe I want to use four of this for the question answer. And then I use the other part for the question. So I have to decide. So I could choose to say that, Okay, this is where the question will be. So I can use two of this and leave four behind. Okay, just merge this one like it. So this one becomes the panel for the question. This one becomes the panel for the what? The numbering. Okay, so all that I do is that I make sure that the number, if I want it to be at the center, I want to put that. If I want it to be at the edge, I'll put it at the edge, depending on how I want them to work here. Okay. I can put it anywhere I want it. Yeah, I think center middle, this will be okay. So let's say the question is what? Location. So we just put in location. Okay, again, you have to show where you want it to be. So maybe you want it to be at the edge like this. Okay, change the fonts to whichever size that you want. Okay, whichever fonts you want, change it to whichever size you want. And that should be cool. Okay, then the response. Now you choose where you want a response to be. So if you look at these ones that we are doing, the response, there is the top is what? Please what? Please write below. So in that case, what was happening was that you merge the top like this. You just merge the top. And then that part becomes what? The please uh, write below. And then the down here, merge the down, okay? And that becomes the space that you want you to write. So what you see in there is the dot 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 you can do it in so many ways, but I will just do it like this. You know I'm a lazy guy. I will just click on this one. I've bothered that already. I just click on this one. I've bothered that already. I click here. I've bothered that already. I click here. I've bothered that already. So I finished the body. Hello. Hi. Yeah. So I now have it in the border. Is that okay with you? Good. So let's just add the last one to it. Yeah. Oh, the last one too is the same thing like H. Yeah, so, yeah, so what would I have, if it is like the H, what would I have done is that I would just do this. Okay. Then just copy it like this. And then just paste it in the next session. Like that. So what I would do is that I come here and I say what? Question two. Then I come to this one and I say what? H. Straight up. I'll finish with that. Uh, are you getting it? Yeah, so within a matter of seconds, I could be moving like that. So let's try the third one then. So the third one, you can see that it's in three sections. That is, there are three, uh, what do you call it, cells that have been merged together. Because you wanted to put a title at the top, and then the individual answers in each uh, person. So that one too, you could easily do that by just coming down here. So there's three. There's three that have been merged. You just take these three. And then what do you do? You merge that. And then all of these three, okay, also what? Merged. Hello? Okay. So this one becomes what? Question three. This one becomes what? Marital status. Hello? Okay. Yeah, you do the alignments, so you decide on where you want them to be. Okay? 
So if this one is in the middle, you can put it in the middle. If you think this is too big, you can hold it here and then pull it. Are you getting it? Yeah. If you think it's too big, you can pull it and then push it there. Now, so the next thing is what? Measure the top. In order to get where you want to write your fence. Okay, if you look at this one, that was what was done. The top was matched. Are you getting it? Good. Then the next thing here is what? Married. Here is what? Single. Right. And then the next answer came down here. Okay. So if you are using a, a, a what do you call it? Eh? Control what? D. We get it. Them, then we just push them down here. But they don't come too early for me. I'll use my hand. So I can hold control and then still hold them and drag them all the way down here. And tell them they should come and then settle down. Mm -hmm. But what I will do, uh, anytime I do that, then it also copy again. So what I will do is that as I put this one here, I'll be making sure that at least I've aligned that one with what? With this. Are you getting it? So that if you look through the questionnaire, you can have some alignments down there. Like that. So I'll try. I'll try to arrange them. So you see, uh -huh. I'll try and arrange them and make sure that they align. There are times that I put ruler on my screen before. <laughs> I just say some ruler, I put it on my screen and see if the thing is aligned very well. I mean the thing is a craziness. I mean I'm... <laughs> I mean the thing, you are saying craziness. Okay, so we can we can adjust we can adjust the, the sizes for it to look a little bigger. Okay. Okay. And then this one was what? Please take please take as what applies to you. Does it apply or apply? I try, try, try. apply. Yes, I apply to you. I what applies. Yes. Is it a please take what applies to you? Good. So that again. Yeah, that's the left with the cohabitat. Um, you can do this and then you can make it. I think uh, for that one, the font size is too big. Yeah, so we can recre rec reduce this font size a little bit so that that looks a little nice. So we can pull this one down, push this one also down. Yeah, so we have this. The next one is to put it in here. So we have to decide where we want to put it. So we may want to put it exactly on the middle or in line with the other one. So if you want to put it in line the other one, that means control what D and then you push that one here. Okay, hello. Hi. Yes, I push that one here. Then I'll rather join this two. I'll merge this one and then put what the cohabitat here. And put the cohabitat here. Hello? Hi. Have I written it right? Habited is not spelled right. Habitation. Whatever. Let's leave this like this. So the next thing you do is. Example Romeo. Example Romeo, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Romeo, you know what The boys themselves know you are cohabited. Okay. So I'll just put this ones like this. Okay. Then the next one, I'll just highlight all of this and put this one here. Then the next one, I'll highlight all of this and put this one here. Okay, so now let's print preview our uh, questionnaire. So this is what we're getting. Hello. So you see, it's coming up to share. <laughs> right, so if I really want to print, if I really want to print, uh, normally I like printing this with this, this software. 
new PDF. It's a very small software. You just you just install it on your machine. On your machine, yeah. You just install it. Uh, do. It's just a very small software. I have it. Anybody who wants it. This is what I like using in printing my PDFs. Okay, but you could, if you don't even have this, you could go to save as. So as you save as, then you choose the PDF okay, so from the bottom there. From Excel, you will not save. You can just no, I it. just print. Okay. Now take, take the class um, for the save as so that you know the PDF save. Yeah. So with my, I'll just go to print and I'll print this PDF like this with this particular listing. So let me print the data. I'll come for the save as for you to see. So if I want to print it, tell me I should put a name and all that. So if I want to put a name, yeah, Phantom also that, but it puts it in Christian at the down there. Though you can clear it later. You can even clear it from the settings. It's from the settings, you can clear it from the settings, yeah. Phantom does that, yeah. So let me see where I want to put it. I'll just go here. Yeah, I want to put it, I want to put it uh, in my research consults, as you people call it. Yeah. So now I want to print, okay? So I go to this side. Now I print it. Yeah. So this is it. See so the questionnaire we've done. Hello. Uh, yeah, this is the questionnaire we've done. So it didn't look like it was something nice, but I see the way it looked like after I printed it in the video. Hello. After you've printed, you realize that this one needs a little bit of what? Yeah. Align. Yeah. yeah. You just have to align it. Yeah, the color combination, that one, it is your the projector that is very tech problem. It's clean here. The color combination is clean here. Hello? Uh, yeah, it, it's your vivid tech thing. No, the one is that. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. So if you if you if you, if you can you can make you can make questionnaires look nice. You can design them. Any question on this one? Okay. So on that note, uh, we went this section because it's eight o'clock. God willing, tomorrow we'll continue with our questionnaire design. Okay, so now we get into it. So now we distribute the questionnaire and then we start the validation process. God willing, tomorrow. We've done that. That was what we did the last time. Right. So we'll do, we'll do, yeah. Why uh, the PDF format? I've not been able to take Excel to what, what do you call Word. I've not been able to do that. We, we did, but it will be in the platform. I've not been able to do that. I've not seen that option. No, there's no option. You will only copy. Aha, uh -huh. if you copy and come to put it there, it can mess up. You can only copy. Yeah, it can mess up. Not to align. Yeah, but when you bring it in a PDF, it's cool. It comes out no editable. You're going to print it out. You know, sometimes when you are printing something in Word, the person's margin, preset margin could affect. Uh, so normally when it comes to thesis work, especially when you have finished finally and those things, it's better you to put them in PDF before you go and print them. I mean, you should save as PDF. Yeah, okay. So if you want to do the save as PDF thing, this is what is going to happen. Yeah, the older versions, if you don't have it, you can, you can install. I used to have the software, you can install it as it's an add you can install. Okay, so you go to save as, so you choose where you want to save it uh, with this one, but uh, let's go back to this side. Okay. When you come here, the options are down here. You come to this side, you come to this side, and then you choose PDF. Sir, but I also know this one when you go back to Excel. Okay, I'm coming. Yeah, so you just choose to save it in PDF and it should work. Yeah, so you see that one too, you save in PDF. That is what I added the W to.
Oh, yeah, okay, export to PDF. Okay, that's it. That is, yeah, so you go to uh huh, let me export to where do we do? Let's go to exports. Okay, so when you come to exports, there's no way. Is it what? Change file type. Yeah, that is a change file type. So if we come to change file type, do you see word here? There's no word. There's no word. It's only PDF to Excel and Excel to PDF. Save as another file type. Save as another file type. Okay, let's see that option. Which one? Save as another file type. Save as another file type. Okay, let's see. Okay, save as another file type. It brings you back to where I was. The options don't have that. As for that, I'm sure about it. The option okay. don't have that. All these options were the this one, um, yeah. Excel trace text. There's no way. Okay, so, so after yeah. you've done the PDF, uh, uh -huh. go there, then say open open with web. Okay, you don't worry, don't worry. It's a cool thing, let's try. After we've come to the PDF like this, okay. Uh, why is the questionnaire that we did? Okay, this is the questionnaire, and then we go to right click, and then we go to what? Open what? Yeah, and then one whip open with what? Word. Where? Where desktop? Is it the same as where? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, fine. Let's see if it'll work. Mm. Where do we now yeah. convert your PDF well, to this? Thing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see what happens with that. <laughs> yeah, if it works, it's something new I've learned. You know, I've been trying some time to get a word question. That's where they. Yeah, that's it. Escape. Is it what? So, zoom to 100 and let's see. It's in reading mode. No, it's in reading mode, so... Mine will say again. Yeah, so that is it. Perfect. It works. So you can save it in, uh, what do you call it, uh, PDF. And then now you open the PDF with what? Or you can even use the Phantom to convert it to Yeah, you can also use Phantom to convert it to what? So the options are? The options are plenty. Just yeah. enter the Yeah, so if you are here... So type and let's see. If you are here, you can easily still do the editing, Abby. Yeah. Or the editing or the work. Abby, you can do it. Abby, you can do it. It's read-only. It's read-only, yeah? When you type... See, it's read-only for... You should enable it. I don't know why. It's not, it didn't come for enable. Mine will come and then I can edit it. Okay, I hear. This you can design from the scratch. Buy it. You can do for some something, yeah. I think that this thing, you can't do it. The ships. The ships will not, but the text will. Okay, that's cool. All right. I have learned something new because I was just doing PDF. Well, there was no need to bring it to where it do, but I mean, that's cool. Yeah. All right. You still don't see the need to bring it to where Maybe one day you see the need. <laughs> yeah, you can edit straight from PDF, yeah. But sometimes you may want to send a document to somebody. You may have done work for somebody who wants to see it in word mode. So it's it. I've I've had that request before. Can you bring it to us as uh, word? And I tried and then what? If I've learned something new. That's okay. Thank you.